Hi and welcome back to the cottage, or should I say, welcome to my kitchen. If you've ever wondered what's inside the kitchen of a large minimalist family, today is your day. I've done a tour of our minimalist kitchen in the past, but apparently I didn't do as good a job as I could have. I got quite a few comments saying it wasn't a true tour since I didn't share what was inside the cabinets and the drawers in detail. It's a rare occasion that this kitchen isn't getting constant use throughout the day. It is a busy place, but we have plans to order pizza for supper, which frees me up to do a deep cleaning. So today I thought I would pair a cleaning video with a tour of the cabinets and drawers so that while I'm doing a deep cleaning, you can watch me clean if you're interested in that. Or if you are interested in what I keep inside of these cabinets and drawers, you can take a look in that as well. All right, so while I get started, I just wanted to point out a couple of things about the kitchen space itself in case you missed the other tour video. The overall size of the room is 13 feet by 10 and a half feet, so it's not a huge space, but it is very functional, which I will explain as the video goes on. Also, probably the first thing that most people notice about the kitchen is that we have no upper cabinets. Technically, we do have one above our fridge, which I just recently cleaned, so that won't be part of today's video. But here's a glimpse inside of that cabinet, which is where we keep the big bulky items such as a roasting pan, electric griddle, and the crock pot. And the final thing that I want to note is the little computer stand I have set up in the corner. In the drawer, I keep things such as stamps, pens, paper, and current mail or bills, things like that. It's the perfect place to set my computer when I'm in the kitchen working on things, either cooking, washing dishes, or cleaning up like today. I can listen to a podcast or watch a video and have that computer right there close at hand. Okay, on to the cleaning. When I do a deep clean of the kitchen, I have a pretty particular sequence that I like to follow and it starts with the appliances first. I found that the best time to clean the fridge is right before grocery day, which is typically for me every couple of weeks I do a large grocery haul, so that's about how often I do an interior wipe down. This is also a great time to check for any food that needs to be used up before grocery day and to move those items closer to the front so that they're more visible. Next, I'm going to focus my attention on the oven. Both our fridge and the oven are stainless steel, which is a finish that tends to show fingerprints pretty easily. And because of that, I do wipe down the outside faces of both appliances pretty often. The stovetop grates and the vent hood filter are put in a sink full of soapy hot water and left there to soak while I scrub the inside of the oven. This is a homemade cleaning spray that I'm trying out. It's made of really basic household ingredients such as rubbing alcohol, vinegar, and Dawn dish soap. It seems to work really well on a lot of different types of surfaces, so I'm liking it so far. I do let it sit for a while on really greasy spots so that it can be most effective. So before I scrub the inside of the oven door, I'm going to move on to the microwave. The process of cleaning all three appliances can take around an hour or so total as long as I stay focused and it feels really great to have them all done at the same time. I'm going to savor this moment though because I know that they're not going to stay clean for long. Now it's time to tackle the food storage spaces. 
Our kitchen is essentially divided in two. If you're looking into the room towards the sink and the large picture window, everything to the left is food storage. Um, the fridge, of course, but also the dry and canned goods. I suppose you could kind of think of this area as our pantry space, since we don't have a true pantry in our home. These first three drawers that I'm cleaning are pretty much reserved for snack or quick food items, grab and go breakfast bars, bags of chips, sunflower seeds, crackers, and then the treats are kept in the bottom drawer. Here's a quick glance at the next three drawers. The top is what my older boys called their protein drawer, and these are items that they have purchased for themselves. Next I keep the dried pasta, rice, and pancake mixes, and the bottom drawer is for reserved snacks and other miscellaneous food items. The kids know that they can't just come and grab from this drawer. If their snack drawer is getting low, I will refill from the stash I keep in here. I decided to use this clear bin to keep extra snacks in instead of just keeping them in the packages that they come in inside of that drawer. The canned goods are all stored in the Lazy Susan, as are all of the bread products, potatoes, cereal, and any extra sauces. Then we've got our utensil drawer, which I've shown before. This is the only non-food storage space to the left of the sink, but it's really handy and convenient for putting away silverware directly from the dish drain. In the cabinet below is where I keep the cooking oils and also the onions, which honestly, I'm not sure why I don't keep the onions with the potatoes in the Lazy Susan, which is, I guess, something that I can think about. I'm always up for reevaluating the way that the space functions to make it most efficient. So that is something I will consider, but that's not a task for today. After a short break for some delicious pizza, I am back in the kitchen and ready to get this project done. This little crock is one of my favorite things about the kitchen organization. It holds all of our cooking utensils and sits right next to the stove for super convenient access. Okay, quick tour under the sink. This is not a pretty space at all. The fire extinguisher is here as are garbage bags, the scrub brush, the dish drain, and this is also where I keep the dish soap. This side over here is sort of reserved for the kids and the different cooking tools that they either received as gifts or purchased with their own money. So we have an air fryer, a popcorn maker, a mini egg griddle, and some different baking and cooking tools. Now moving on to the cabinets to the right of the sink, which are essentially where we keep all of the tools needed for preparing, cooking, and serving the food. Pots and pans, baking dishes, cutting boards, and those types of things. This top drawer has a lot of miscellaneous, smaller items in it, such as a can opener, pizza cutter, and pot holders. The cabinet below it is sort of our kitchen's version of a small appliance garage, I suppose you could say. There are a few miscellaneous items in here as well, which I will keep in this basket. Also, we have mixing bowls, large measuring cups, an electric tea kettle, a waffle maker, and of course, the toaster. Keeping the spice drawer next to the stove where the spices are used most often is really handy. As you can see, there have been some spills in here since I've cleaned it out last. These little liner strips are so nice because I can just pop them out and bring them to the sink to wash them before putting them back in the drawer. This is a sight that just makes me so happy.
The Lazy Susan on this side of the kitchen is reserved for our everyday dishes and bowls, as well as our skillets, saucepans, and stock pots. Then we have a place to keep cookbooks. Some of these are kids books, which maybe I'll have put under the sink at some point. I also keep my weekly meal rotation sheets in this drawer. If you don't know what those are, I will leave a link in the video description explaining them. This final cabinet is the one that is the most hodgepodge and also gives me the most frustration. This is an area I probably will in the future do some reorganizing with. We keep a basket filled with our glass storage containers and lids in here, and all of our baking supplies and bulk spices. Now, I don't bake that often, so having them be a little bit less accessible isn't a huge deal for me, but it would be nice if I didn't have to dig all the way back into the back of the cabinet to get to them. If you're still with me, wow, I'm impressed. Maybe you are as tired as I am just watching this process, but I'm not quite done yet. Now it's time to clean the surfaces of the kitchen. I do a top-down approach to this, starting with wiping down all of the countertops. Next, I'm moving on to cleaning the cabinet fronts. I've always thought it was kind of funny when people said that they could never have white cabinetry because they get dirty so much quicker, but in reality, the color of the cabinet has nothing to do with how quickly they get dirty. A darker stained cabinet will be just as dirty as a white cabinet, but you probably just won't see it as easily. Personally, I like being able to see the smudges and the smears so that they can be cleaned up quickly. And finally, a sweeping of the floor. If you were wondering what is in this cabinet, well, this is where the garbage and recycling bins are kept. A fresh hand towel to hang up and now I am finished just in time to put this kitchen and myself to bed for the evening. I hope you enjoyed cleaning with me today and if you ever had any question about what is kept in our kitchen, now you know. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope that you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.